And the Chamber will now turn to the municipalities component of the case. In relation to count three, the accused submits that there is no evidence that events occurred in the municipalities according to a pattern of behavior. The prosecution does not respond directly to this specific challenge by the accused, but refers as an example to the active destruction of virtually all the Bosnian Muslim and Bosnian Croat religious site in the municipalities. The chamber has received extensive evidence about a pattern of persecutions through killings, deportations, and destruction of cultural and religious symbols committed across the municipalities by Bosnian Serb forces against the Bosnian Muslim and or Bosnian Croat population. For example, in relation to Drina Valley and the Priador area, Haaland testified that, I quote, you would sometimes find hundreds and hundreds of houses blown up, burnt out, or destroyed, and then one house would not be destroyed in the middle, would have a little garden or something, and then they would have written on it in big paint, Srpska kucha, meaning this is a Serb Serbian house, indicating that huge number of the non-Serb population had been violently expelled." Unquote. On this topic, the chamber also refers to the evidence of KDZ 240. The accused also submits that there is no evidence of forcible transfer or deportation as acts of persecutions in the municipalities. However, the chamber has received extensive evidence that a large number of Bosnian Muslim and or Bosnian Croats from the municipalities were intentionally forcibly displaced either within or across a de jure or a de facto border by Bosnian Serb forces. The chamber refers here to the evidence of Ashim Egrilic, KDZ 011, and KDZ 605. In addition, the, the accused submits that there is no evidence that people were detained on the basis of their ethnic affiliation, but argues that they were detained for the purpose of investigation. He also claims that there is no evidence of forced labor in the municipalities and refers instead to evidence showing that work was voluntary. However, the chamber notes that it has received evidence about Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats, including women and children, being detained in the municipalities specifically on the basis of their ethnic affiliation and not solely for the purpose of investigation. The chamber here refers to the testimony of KDZ 051, KDZ 239, and KDZ 240. The chamber all has also received evidence from a number of witnesses, including KDZ 024, KDZ 051, and KDZ 610 about instances of Bosnian Muslim and Bosnian Croat detainees being forced by Bosnian Serb forces to work, including digging graves and trenches in detention facilities. Accordingly, the chamber finds that there is evidence on which, if accepted, a reasonable trial of fact could be satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that during the period relevant to the indictment in the municipalities, Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats were detained specifically on the basis of their ethnic affiliation, that forced labor was imposed on Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats by Bosnian Serb forces, and that Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats were forcibly displaced either within or across a de jure or a de facto border with the specific intent to discriminate against them on political, racial, or religious grounds. In addition to the evidence discussed earlier, 
the Chamber received extensive evidence supporting count three in the municipalities as charged in the indictment. This includes the testimony of KDZ 024 relating to Kluge, uh, KDZ 048 relating to Priador, KDZ 239 relating to Focha, K KDZ 610 relating to Zvonik, Hyrudin Karic relating to Pale, KDZ 240 relating to Bozanski Novi, and KDZ 605 relating to Bratunas. Accordingly, the Chamber finds that there is evidence on which, if accepted, a reasonable trial of fact could be satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that persecutions charged as a crime against humanity pursuant to Article 5H of the statute were carried out by Bosnian Serb forces against Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats. In relation to counts for five and six, the accused does not raise any specific challenges with respect to municipalities. The chamber has received evidence which suggests that Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats were killed by Bosnian Serb forces in the municipalities on a large scale in detention facilities, including as a result of cruel and inhumane treatment and killings which occurred during and after the alleged takeover of these municipalities. This includes the testimony of Musan Talovic relating to Bratunas, Munir Aselanovic relating to Sokolac, Ahmed Julic relating to Sanski Most, Aset Muracevic relating to Vogosca, KDZ 041 relating to Novigrad, and KDZ 048 relating to Priador. The chamber also received into evidence exhumation rec records as well as pathology and autopsy reports which provide evidence that Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats were killed in municipalities, including in Rogatica, Sokolac, and Zvoni. The chambers refers, for example, to P3276, P3297, P4106, and P4903. Having reviewed the evidence presented by the prosecution, the Chamber finds that there is evidence on which, if accepted, a reasonable trial of fact could be satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that murder charged as a crime against humanity pursuant to Article 5A of the statute and as a violation of laws or customs of war under Article 3 of the statute and specifically Common Article 3 and extermination charged as a crime against humanity pursuant to Article 5B of the statute were carried out by Bosnian Serb forces in the municipalities. In relation to counts 7 and 8, the accused generally submits that there is no evidence of forcible transfer or t deportation in the municipalities. The chamber has heard evidence which suggests that a large number of Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats from the municipalities were intentionally forcibly displaced either within or across a de jure or de facto border by Bosnian Serb forces. This includes the evidence of KDZ 605, Mehmet Music, KDZ 024, KDZ 026, and Selanovic. Selmanovic. The chamber also received into evidence the report of Tabo, who testified about refugees and displaced persons, as well as changes to the ethnic composition in the municipality. This is P4994. Having reviewed the evidence presented by the prosecution, the chamber therefore finds that there is evidence on which, if accepted, a reasonable trial of fact could be satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that deportation charged as a crime against humanity punishable under Article 5D 
as well as forcible transfer, an inhumane act charged as a crime against humanity, punishable under Article 5I of the statute, were carried out by Bosnian Serb forces in the municipalities. In relation to count one, the accused submits that there is no evidence upon which the chamber could conclude that there was an intention to destroy the Bosnian Muslims or Bos Bosnian Croats. He further submits that displacement does not equate destruction and that the pattern of prisoner exchanges flies in the face of genocide as thousands of Bosnian Muslims were exchanged and released in 1992. The accused contends that the objective of the Bosnian Serb leadership to create a large, larger Serb state did not necessarily entail the destruction of the non-Serb population. In support, the accused refers to inter alia the 2007 judgment of the ICJ in the case of Bosnia and Herzegovina against Serbia and Montenegro, and several judgment of this tribunal where genocide in the municipalities was found not to have been proven. He also refers to D2250, a chart prepared by prosecution witness Tabo, reflecting the total numbers of dead and missing Bosnian Muslims from the seven municipalities where genocide is alleged to have occurred. The prosecution responds that the fact that the desire to create a Serbian state may have had motives other than the commission of genocide is irrelevant. The prosecution submits that what is of relevance is whether there was dolus specialis. In that respect, the prosecution responds by reference to statements of the accused that he shared the intent uh, to destroy the Bosnian Muslim and or Bosnian Croat group in part, and that he encouraged the destruction of this protected group by the organs under his authority and control. It further cites illustrative examples of incidents in Zvoni and Priedor which in the prosecution submission show genocidal intent. Finally, the prosecution adds that there is no minimum numerical requirement for genocide and that displacement itself can contribute to, contribute to destruction or can be evidence of genocidal intent. At the outset, the chamber notes that the ICJ judgment and the tribunal jurisprudence cited by the accused, and the findings found therein in relation to the alleged genocide in municipalities in BIH are not binding in any way on the chamber, including for the purposes of its Rule 98 bis determination. Similarly, while the prosecution correctly observes that, that no chamber of the tribunal referred to by the accused has, en has entered a judgment for acquittal at the Rule 98 bis stage for genocide, this does not preclude this chamber from reaching that conclusion on its review of the evidence before it. If the chamber is convinced that taking the totality of the evidence presented by the prosecution, even at its highest, there is no evidence on which it could convict the accused of genocide under count one. The chamber should enter a judgment of acquittal for count one at this stage. For the purpose of count one, the prosecution alleges in the indictment that in some municipalities, the alleged campaign of persecution between 31st March and 31st December 1992 quote, escalated to include conduct that manifested an intent to destroy in part the national, ethnical, 
and or religious groups of Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats as such, unquote. The chamber recalls that the alleged genocidal act as charged in the indictment on the count one include one, killing of members of the protected group, two, causing of serious bodily and mental harm to members of the protected group, and three, detention on the conditions of life calculated to bring about physical destruction of the protected group. The chamber has reviewed evidence relating to the municipalities, including the testimony of Talovic from Bratunac, Seat Hojic from Vlas Vlasenica, KDZ610 from Zvonik, KDZ239 from Foča, KDZ075 from Kluč, and KDZ048 as well as Ivo Atlia from Priador. This and other evidence indicates that a large number of Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats were killed by Bosnian Serb forces in the municipalities during and after their alleged takeover and while in detention. As described earlier, this evidence is capable of supporting a conclusion that Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats were killed on a large scale with the intent to kill with persecutory intent in relation to counts three to six of the indictment. The chamber notes that the determination of whether there's evidence capable of, capable of supporting a conviction for genocide does not involve a numerical assessment of the number of people killed and does not have a numeric threshold. However, the evidence the chamber received in relation to the municipalities, even if taken at its highest, does not reach the level from which a reasonable trial of fact could infer that a significant section of the Bosnian Muslim and or Bosnian Croat groups and a substantial number of members of these groups were targeted for destruction so as to have an impact on the existence of the Bosnian Muslims and, and or Bosnian, Bosnian Croats as such. As noted earlier, the chamber recalls that the actus reus for genocide can also manifest itself by one, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, or by two, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. The chamber recalls that serious bodily harm must go beyond temporary unhappiness embarrassment or humiliation and resulting result in a grave and long-term disadvantage to a person's ability to lead a normal and co constructive life, but it need not be permanent and irremediable. The chamber has received evidence from witnesses, including KDZ239 from Fotsa, KDZ050 and KDZ048 from Priador, KDZ605 from Bratnats, KDZ603 from Vlasenica, Yusuf Avdispahic from Zvonik, KDZ490 from Sanski Most, which indicates that Bosnian Serb forces caused serious bodily or mental harm to many, Bos many Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats during their detention in multiple detention facilities. However, in order to support a conviction for genocide, the bodily or mental harm inflicted on members of a group must be of such a serious nature as to threaten its, direction, its destruction in whole, in part. In that regard, the chamber has not heard evidence even taken at its highest, which could support a conclusion by a reasonable trial of fact that the harm caused reached a level where it contributed to or tended to contribute to the destruction 
of the Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats in whole or in part, or that it was committed with the intent to destroy those groups. The tribunal's jurisprudence established that, the, that forcible transfer does not constitute in at and of itself a genocidal act, but where attended by such circumstances as to lead to the death of the whole or part of the displaced population, it may be considered an underlying offense that causes serious bodily or mental harm. The chamber refers here to the appeals chamber's judgment in Kristic and the trial chamber's judgment in Popovic et al. The evidence heard by the chamber indicates that the circumstances in which the Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats in the municipalities were forcibly transferred or displaced from their homes were attended by conditions of great hardship and suffering, and that some of those displaced may have suffered serious bodily or mental harm during this process. However, the chamber has not heard evidence which rises to the level which could sustain a conclusion that the serious bodily or mental harm suffered by those forcibly transferred in the municipalities was attended by such circumstances as to lead to the death of the whole or part of the displaced population for the purposes of the actus reus for genocide under Article 4B of the statute. The evidence of the witnesses referred to earlier is also illustrative of the conditions of detention, including cruel and inhumane treatment, torture, physical and psychological abuse, rape and sexual violence, inhumane living conditions, forced labor, failure to provide adequate accommodation, shelter, food, water, medical care, or hygienic facilities in relation to which the chamber already found there was sufficient evidence for the purpose of count three. However, in determining whether conditions of life imposed on the targeted group were calculated to bring about its physical destruction, the chamber has to focus on the objective prob probability of these conditions leading to the physical destruction of the group in part and must assess factors like the nature of the conditions imposed, the length of time that members of the group were subjected to them, and characteristics of the targeted group such as vulnerability. When reviewing evidence going to count one for the purpose of this ruling, the chamber has indeed focused on and assessed those factors. In addition, while doing so, the chamber also reminded itself that the charge of deliberately inflicting on the group con conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part does not require proof that the result was actually achieved. Having completed this review and analysis, the chamber came to the conclusion that for the purposes of count one, the evidence before it, even taken at its highest, cannot support the conclusion that the conditions of detention in the scheduled detention facilities reached a level which could support an inference that Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats were detained in conditions of life calculated to bring about their physical destruction. As mentioned earlier, the chamber notes that in the absence of direct evidence that the physical perpetrators of the crimes alleged to have been committed in the municipalities carried out these crimes with genocidal intent, the chamber can infer specific intent from a number of factors and circumstances, including the general context of the case, 
the means available to the perpetrator, the surrounding circumstances, the perpetration of other culpable acts systematically directed against the same group, the numerical scale of atrocities, atrocities committed, the repetition of destructive and discriminatory acts, the derogatory language targeting the protected group, or the existence of a plan or policy to commit the underlying offense. As stated earlier, the Chamber has heard evidence of culpable acts systematically directed against Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats in the municipalities and of the repetition of discriminatory acts and derogatory language. However, the nature, scale, and context of these culpable acts, be it in all the municipalities covered by the indictment or the seven municipalities in which genocide is specifically alleged, do not reach the level from which a reasonable trial of fact could infer that they were committed with genocidal intent. Finally, having reviewed the totality of the evidence which the Chamber has received with respect to the killing of serious bodily or mental harm to the forcible displacement of and conditions of life inflicted on Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats in detention facilities in the municipalities, the Chamber finds that there is no evidence that these actions reach reach it a level from which a reasonable trial of fact could draw an inference that they were committed with an intent to destroy in whole or in part the Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats as such. As stated earlier, the prosecution in its response to the accused also refers to evidence of statements and speeches made by him and other members of the Bosnian Serb leadership, which, according to the prosecution, contain rhetorical warning of the disappearance, elimination, I'm sorry, annihilation, or extinction of Bosnian Muslims in the event that war broke out. The chamber has considered these examples as well as the other evidence received in relation to the accused in light of the scale and the context of the alleged crimes in the municipalities in 1992, and the inability to infer genocidal intent from other factors. Following this review, the Chamber finds that notwithstanding the statement of the accused, there is no evidence upon which, if accepted, a reasonable trial of fact could find that these, the acts of killing, serious bodily or mental harm, and conditions of life inflicted on the Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats were perpetrated with the dollars specialis required for genocide. Having reviewed the evidence admitted in this case with respect to count one, the Chamber finds that there is no evidence, even taken at its highest, which could be capable of supporting a conviction for genocide in the municipalities as charged under Article 4.3 of the statute. In relation to his responsibility with regard to municipalities component of the case, the accused submits that there is no evidence that Bosnian Serb leadership intended to permanently remove the Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats from the territories in BIH referred to in the indictment. He also submits that there is no evidence that there was a takeover, there was a takeover of power in the municipalities or that incidents happened at the initiative of the Serbs or that was a there was a systematic approach to the question of minorities in the Republika Srpska, from which the crimes charged in the indictment would result. Finally, in relation to the detention facilities in the municipalities, he submits 
that it was difficult as president to influence what was happening on the ground because he had neither communication nor access. The prosecution inter alia resp response that there's evidence that the accused sought an ethnically clean state and that uh, redistribution of the population was to take place over a vast amount of territory. The prosecution also contends that the accused was receiving information on the mistreatment in the detention facilities and undertook efforts to distance himself from them. First, the chamber notes that there is evidence that throughout the period of the indictment, members of the Bosnian Serb leadership met often, coordinated, and exchanged information as well as ideas. The chamber has received in evidence the records of hundreds of regular meetings attended by the Bosnian Serb leadership between 1991 and 1995, sometimes with municipal or regional leaders and members of the VRS main staff, during which the participants discussed strategy and policies and often espoused the same goals and shared similar rhetoric. The chamber also refers to the hundreds of intercepted conversations admitted into evidence, as well as to the testimony of Wilson. Second, contrary to what the accused asserts, there is evidence of a, of a planned takeover of power in the municipalities, which sought to establish, establish separate Bosnian Serb institutions and to create a Bosnian Serb homogeneous state for which the Bosnian Serb were actively preparing. The chamber refers to P960, P2548, P2552, P2581, and P3337. The chamber received ample evidence that throughout the conflict, the objective of an ethnically homogeneous territory was reiterated by Bosnian Serb leadership. The chamber refers, for example, to P1385, P2556, D86, and D90. Finally, the chamber heard evidence that throughout the municipalities, the policy of the Bosnian Serb leadership did result in what Harland described as huge-scale violent expulsion of non-Serb population. Accordingly, there is evidence upon which, if accepted, a reasonable trial of fact could be satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that during the period of relevant period relevant to the indictment there existed a joint criminal enterprise composed of inter alia members of the Bosnian Serb leadership, including the accused, the purpose of which was to permanently remove the Bosnian Muslims and or Bosnian Croats from Bosnian Serb claimed territories in BIH. In relation to his responsibility for the municipality's component of the case, the accused does not make a specific challenge, since he is challenging the very existence of a joint criminal enterprise. First, there is evidence that as charged in paragraph 14 of the indictment, the accused, as president of the SDS and later Republika Srpska president, formulated and promoted the development and implementation of STS and Bosnian Serb governmental policies intended to advance the objective of the joint criminal enterprise. The chamber refers in particular to the evidence in relation to the promulgation of the six strategic goals and their implementation on the ground through a number of VRS directives for military operation. This is in P161, P976, P3036, and D325.
The chamber also received evidence that the accused disseminated and encouraged the dissemination of propaganda to Bosnian Serbs intended to engender fear and hatred of Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats in Bosnian Serbs. The chamber received evidence that within its unit, the main staff accentuated the message that the Bosnian Serbs were threatened by aggression and genocide and instructed units to, quote, take care to achieve the desired information and propaganda effects, unquote. The chamber refers, for example, to P962, D270, and D325. Okun testified that in negotiations with international representatives, the accused, quote, never denied Serb ambitions for a separate republic in Bosnia, nor that his forces had conducted ethnic cleansing or military operations against the other Bosnian nationalities. Rather, he attempted to justify the actions of the people he claimed to represent, namely that they, the Serb people, had to be protected from the aggressiveness of the Muslims or the Turks." Unquote. There is also evidence that the accused directed and encouraged Bosnian Serb political and governmental organs and Bosnian Serb forces to carry out acts in furtherance of the objective of the joint criminal enterprise. The chamber refers to the evidence that the accused encouraged municipal leaders to undertake actions to create a homogeneous territory. This is in P3405 and D92. Contrary to the accused submission in relation to his lack of influence on and information as to the events on the ground, the chamber received evidence that the accused failed while under a duty to do so, to take adequate steps to ensure that Bosnian Serb political and governmental organs and Bosnian Serb forces would act to protect Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats residing in areas under their control. For instance, there is evidence that as early as 1992, there were working communication systems from the Supreme Commander to the lower levels, and therefore that there were mechanisms through which the accused was informed regularly and in detail of the situation on the ground. The chamber refers to D325. Of relevance to the accused knowledge of existence of detention facilities in Priador, the chamber refers to the testimony of Wilson and of Edward Vuliami. Vuliami testified that the accused told him that he could order that the Omarska detention facility be closed down in two days and that he knew the prisoners at Omarska did not have enough food. The chamber also heard evidence that Milo Milorad Davidovich attended the meeting with the accused and Mladic, during which the accused assured Davidovich that measures to prevent looting were already taken and that further attempts to prevent looting would be made, but instructed that no arrest of Serbs should be made to avoid conflicts between Serbs. The accused said, quote, that it was very important for Serbs not to fight one another as it had been the case in some other conflicts, such as during the Second World War, even if it is done at the expenses of not punishing perpetrators of crimes." Unquote. Accordingly, the Chamber is satisfied that there is evidence upon which, if accepted, a reasonable trial of fact could be satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that during the period relevant to the indictment, through his acts and omissions, 
the accused voluntarily participated in a joint criminal enterprise composed of inter alia members of the Bosnian Serb leadership, the purpose of which was to permanently remove the Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats from Bosnian Serb claimed territory in BIH, that he shared the intent of the other members of this joint criminal enterprise to carry out its objective through the commission of the crimes of persecutions, extermination, murder, deportation, and forcible transfer as inhumane acts, and that he contributed to it through his acts and omission. For the foregoing reasons, the chamber partially grants the accused motion under Rule 98 bis of the rules, enters a judgment of acquittal on count one of the indictment, and dismisses the remainder of the motion. That was the ruling and i like to deal with, in private session, briefly, a couple of matters. Could the chamber move into private session? Very well. The hearing is now adjourned until the 3rd of September 2012, when we will have a status conference. All rise. We will vote.